hotel workers of Reddit, what is the worst thing you have found in a room after a guest stay? Pizza. And not just like leftovers. An entire pizza. And not a single slice of it in the box. The first red flag we found was the slice of pizza smeared all over on the TV. Then we saw two slices side by side like they had worn them for slippers and dragged their feet across the floor. One slice in the dresser, one in the nightstand, one in the sheets, and one in the bathroom sink. We cleaned the room as normal and put all the pizza in the box. The whole time I'm wondering why someone would do this, was the pizza not good? Was one slice enough and you had to buy the whole thing? I'm doing the final checks in the room and it still smells like pizza. I flick the lamp on and look for the final slice. I finally find it, shadowed in the lampshade. This individual had smeared the last slice on the inside of the lampshade. That was the final piece of the puzzle, or pizzazoodle. This person bought an entire pizza just to hide it in his hotel room. A friend used to clean hotel rooms as a side job. Once he found a shit on the nightstand with a slice of cheese on top. Another time, he went into a room to clean and this woman was lying on the bed naked. He apologized and started to leave. She offered him 50 euros to spit on her while she masturbated. He spat on her. They found out who it was and charged him extra for cleaning. Also banned him from the chain. Apparently this wasn't the only hotel he would furnish with his nightstand base slice dairy feckle top deposits. I've worked night audit at a couple hotels for a few years now, and I've got a couple of stories of nastiness left behind in rooms. The first story happened about a week after I started working night audit. This guy who was staying on our first floor, had decided to go outside to smoke and only a towel. His towel apparently became stuck in the door, and in a genius move, he grabbed the smoker's pole and busted out the window to his room. When he climbed in, he cut himself badly enough that he bled all over the room. The shower curtain, bedding and a couple of pillowcases had to be sent out to be professionally cleaned, and the rest of the room had to be professionally cleaned. The hotel charged him with the cost of the window, the cost of the cleanings, and for every night the room was out of order, which was about a month. During cleanup, one of our housemen got cut by the glass in the window, and had to get treated in case of bloodborne disease, and get stitches. The guest paid for all that too. The cost was around $10,000 for everything, and he was banned from the property forever. He tried to come in again about a year later with a third party reservation, and our GM personally waited for him and escorted him off the property. The second story is about a man who we called Huge James. Huge James is literally the fattest man I have ever seen. He's pretty tall, and easily at 4-500 pounds. In his room, are his wife, his daughters, and himself. The women and the family were all normal size. This family quickly developed a bad reputation with our pizza chains that delivered, because they would order a lot of pizza and never tip the driver. The drivers would come down and complain to me or other front desk staff about this. It got to the point where the Domino's drivers would just give us the pizzas to take up to their room. Huge James and his family never let housekeeping in for about a week, and when they finally were allowed in, there was so much trash from fast food and pizza, that they had begun to stuff it under the beds. What is worse is that Huge James was physically too big to use the toilet in the room. We have rooms with reinforced toilets, so we absolutely could have accommodated him, so he had defecated in the tub. He then would use our nice white hotel towels to wipe himself, and just leave it on the floor. Nobody knew about the towels until our laundry lid, Miss Brenda, the sweetest and nicest little woman I know, found them herself. We had to throw the towels away, and we nearly lost Miss Brenda that day as well. While that was going on in the laundry room, one of our housekeepers was cleaning the room and noticed a towel tucked into the side of one of the beds. She pulled the towel out and a giant dildo came flying out with the towel. I saw the pictures of it, and end to end, it was almost as wide as the towel it was covered with. In addition to this, there were stains all over the mattress that had soaked through the sheets and onto the mattress. In the bathroom, the tub wasn't draining, 
and when they pulled a stopper mechanism out to try and clear the blockage, a lot of poop came with it, and that's how we knew they were shoving the poop down the shower drain. During this time, they had been staying on a third party reservation and making a new reservation every few days. When the new reservation popped up in our system after discovering what they had done to the room, the GM decided to evict them. Huge James came down and started screaming at the front desk supervisor about how the mess wasn't his fault and that it was retarded daughter doing all that, and making the messes, and defecating in the tub, those were his exact words, and how he talked about his daughter if that helps you understand what kind of a person he really was. Everyone had met his wife and daughters, and they were really nice people, so we didn't believe him when he made claims that his daughter was the one making the messes. Huge James drove a lifted hammer with huge chromed hour rims, and the night before his eviction, I jotted down his license plate number in case he tried to pull something before he left, he did. When he found out that he was no longer allowed on the property, he trashed his room and smeared all the sauce packets from fast food and actual food on the walls, the TV, and the windows. They found food between the mattresses, and the bed frames had been broken. When it was time for him to go, we had police there to escort them off the property. After they left, all the damage was found in the room, and because I had the license plate number, they were found and charged with vandalism, I think, and we took them to court for the damage to room. It came out in court that it was actually him that was defecating in the tub, and he destroyed the room before they left. A bachelorette party came through. And after they left the next night we had a new rule that charges a $400 glitter fee. But I mean you couldn't see the floor so much glitter. It's been a few years and you can probably still find glitter in the carpet throughout the hotel. Not me but my dad. He was the director of housekeeping for a worldwide hotel chain. His housekeepers didn't know what to do with a jerthy 12 inch dildo suction cupped on the writing table. It was still very moist he said. Then he looked up who stayed in the room to see if maybe they wanted it back but it was too tiny, frail little old ladies canes and all, and he said it was too embarrassing to contact them so he waited a bit to see if they'd call asking for it but they never did. He ended up throwing it out. There was an older woman who checked in my second week of being there, she definitely should not have been independent. She lived in town and booked a room for a week. She said that she was getting her house renovated because it was infested with fiberglass. She was probably in her 70s or was just not up keeping herself for a person in her 60s. She would walk around with one of those surgical masks and wearing yellow rubber gloves. As the week went on she started to wear bandages on her arms. We think she was scratching herself. I bet if we asked it would have been because of the fiberglass. She shouldn't have been able to drive but she kept going to and from her house to get more things, basically was moving in, our hotel was on a main road and she would just back up into it without looking. It was a miracle she never got into an accident. But other than that she would spend most of her time in the room, and occasionally would walk to the office, where the manager would sit, this would be me or one of my other co-workers, and just spout crazy stories about fiberglass and how it was everywhere and all over her room. Once the week was up she extended her stay another 5 days because, her house wasn't ready yet. She repeatedly declined maid service so we could never really get a glance of the condition of the room, yet she would keep complaining that her air conditioning had fiberglass all over it. And one of the days she came to the door complaining that the room was infested with spiders and she showed a tissue that she said had spiders in it but there was nothing, like real sad stuff. Unfortunately since we didn't really have any real way of helping her, my boss advised me to tell her that we are booked solid for the rest of the summer ETC so she couldn't extend her stay any longer. So we waited out those last few days dealing with her complaining and occasionally catching glances at the room as the maids brought her towels and such. From what we saw there were pillows everywhere, a big bag of like perfumes, pills, ETC sprawled out on the dresser. Like Saru men are random things, etc. She was seen a few times carrying large garbage bags into the room we weren't sure what was in them. Just imagine a room that a mentally ill person had been staying in. 
She also had a few weird interactions with guests that made them complain, so we really could not wait until she was gone. But this is the freakiest part where we get to the answer to what we found after a guest's stay. It was spotless. On her last night, we think she climbed out the window, first floor, and put stuff in her car and left, stealing the key too but that's common enough we just replace them. We went back and looked on camera and she was not on camera at all, the night manager did not see her leave, if you leave the regular way you have to be seen by the manager, the office is in the front and it's a small hotel. Only way she called her done it was through the window. Every worker at the hotel was so curious to see what the room was like after she was gone. It was insane, clean, nothing broken except the air conditioner air filter, she said it had fiberglass all in it, but other than that not much else. We still had a third party clean the room but it was freaking weird man. My boss said she drove by the address and it was a beautiful house must be a couple mil minimum, and there was like a metal trailer in the driveway. We think she started living in that after the hotel. Sad, and just so, so bizarre, I really hope she got some help or something, there really wasn't much we I specifically could do, so we had to just move on. A bear. First, you gotta understand that a lot needs to happen for this to occur. Our lowest floor, was still about a meter and a half from the ground, and each outside room had a balcony rail. However, a guest had decided to want to unload his motorcycle from his truck and leave the ramp down, so, I'm assuming, he could ride the bike up when he was done. The guest that was staying in the room had room service, decided to leave the food uncovered and the balcony doors open, and later went to the hotel pool spa to relax. Upon returning, they had gone to a set reception and said that there was a bear in the room. Puzzled. We quietly approached the room and slowly opened the door. Lo and behold, there was a bear eating room service and making a mess of my afternoon. We called Parks Canada to deal with it. Guest was not charged a cleaning fee. One of my favorite hotel stories not a room, but the pool. It's late evening. And a woman comes angrily into our lobby from the pool with three children and says, you guys need to do something about what's going on out there, and gestures to the pool area. I look at her inquisitively and she just says, go look, you'll see. I walk outside and it's pretty immediately clear the couple in the hot tub are discreetly having sex. I approach just enough to get their attention and say, hi guys, I know everyone's here to have a good time tonight, but we got a complaint about some hot and heavy activity in the hot tub. They're clearly intoxicated but apologize and say it will stop. A few minutes later, the phone rings. It's the woman who complained before calling from her room which faces the pool. They're still at it. You need to do something. Children are staying in this hotel. I go back outside and sure enough, now that the spectators are gone. They're fucking it out in the hot tub. I go back out, tell them to get out. They start giving me the story. It's their anniversary. They're very sorry. We won't have any more problems with them, etc etc. I foolishly let them stay in the hot tub. 10 minutes later, phone rings. Seriously? Same lady. I look out the window, they are both totally naked. I'm sorry, mom, I've warned them, I'm calling the police. Police arrive and head out to the pool. The officer handles it like a pro. He's very nice. Let's them know that it's inappropriate, but he doesn't want to ruin what's clearly a fun weekend for them both, but they need to go to their room and not come out for the rest of the night. They are to stay in their room until tomorrow morning, no excuses. The couple thanks him for his understanding and promises they'll behave and stay in their room. The officer and I wind up chatting and laughing about it all and he asks if he can grab a cup of coffee in our lobby while he fills out his report. Of course he can. He's sitting in the lobby. I'm back to work, and I hear him say. Oh, you've got to be fucking kidding me. I'm shocked at the broken quietness as I see him jump up and exit the lobby. Right to the hot tub. Where the same couple is back in the hot tub making out. 
I can only assume they took the stairs at the end of the hall out to the parking lot and around to the pool. Arrested them both. They came back Monday afternoon. They were arrested on Friday night to collect their property.